Hello, everyone. Welcome to Forum Friday. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Hi, Dr. Lynn. Hello, everyone. How's it going on the forums? Very good. Very active. Very busy. Uh, keep growing. We're almost 2,400 strong right now. So we're going to hit we're going to hit 2,500 very soon before long. Right? That's great. Um, are we helping people out there? Yes, that's been that's that's been you know as again we we've been talking about this the last couple of months. That's the what makes it so great for me. I, I appreciate and enjoy, and at the same time, it's a relief because there are so many conversations that keep coming up. I can't possibly get to them all, and um, and see lots of different members who are jumping in and sharing and helping each other, and it's it's really great. It's really good to see. Well, let's jump right into it because I think we have um, a few interesting topics we want to cover today. What's the first one, Mark? Well, the first one is uh, is a problem with a bubble top um, on a hamburger bun. So the, the crust has kind of like a, a bubble in it underneath, right? Where there's is like it's hollow, right? And um, there's been a number of different uh, comments and feedback. I think there's been about 17 or 18 people have, have shared there, um, including you and I, as, if, if I'm not mistaken. And yep. uh, and there's there's a variety of different solutions. Um, some of it is if the flour is too strong, you might need different treatments. Um, if the flour is too weak, then again, it's a, it's a different strengtheners that he may need. Um, my first thought when I saw it, it looked like the dough might be too hot. The dough might be too warm, and um, so if that's the dough one is of the biggest. Uh, yeah, that's usually one of the biggest um, concern with those kind of holes, bubbles yeah. on top. It's just you know, it's so hot it, it creates a weak dough. You know, yeah. and and or if the if the dough is too tight, then it it dries and you get you get these these things trapped there um, in the the molding process, especially on the automated lines. Um, it just, if it's too tight, it just, you just end up with these bubbles on top all the time. Right? Um, yeah. So lots of different suggestions that have come in um, for them to work with. And there's a few things that he said he's going to try and hopefully get back to the forum and share what worked. Right. Um, and uh, so that one's, that was a really quite an interesting one. Um, yeah. More to come. Yep. Yeah. Now this What's one next? is, um, interesting combination of things is a uh, lady posting wanting help with a short pastry. Uh, so a short pastry is another term that is used for pie dough, right? Ah, um, yes. And so the the basic pie dough is usually one, two, three, or three, two, one, whichever way you want to look at it, right? Um, so Explain. Three parts flour, two parts fat, one part water. Um, oh, got so it. it's, it's just ratio. So in that sense, it would be like a hundred percent flour, 66% fat, 33% water, and then got maybe it. one at one or 2% salt, something like that. Right. And then there's all kinds of variations in between adding sugar or milk powder or sour flour or, um, uh, spices or like turmeric for coloring, um, can be added sometimes. Uh, they do that in Jamaica a lot, or they even add curry into it in Jamaica. You can see some of them, they have like this, some of the patties, they look like almost a greenish yellow because they're using curry right in the dough. Um, and um, and so um, so one of the things is, is her ratios are, are kind of off. So um, she was too dry and causing cracking when she tried to fold it over. Uh, and this is similar to a Jamaican meat patty, uh, but it's based on a meat patty uh, made in West Africa. <clears throat> and so one of the the things is this this person being from West Africa themselves is was trying to copy the same fat system that they were using back home, so to speak. And um, the problem with that is that the fat system that they are using back home in West Africa is partially hydrogenated. So it is not allowed in the United States. So you have to find different substitutions for that to get the right amount of solids. And so um, there we need to look into more to understand uh, iodine values, to understand solid fat content, 
um, and a slip point or metal or drop point. And to try and get that kind of information from the original margarine that from home and then compare that with suppliers here to see what you can come up with, right? That's um, true. Because it might be an all-purpose shortening. It That might work very well. Or it might be something else in between. It could be a, 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 a maybe like a, a roll-in shortening. Or my favorite is lard. I like using lard, right? But uh, but then you know you restrict yourself to your audience. So that way, if you if you're yes. in a community where there are a lot of uh, Muslims or Jewish faith, they really not interested in eating things with lard. Right? It. Yeah. Um, the plasticity of um, fats around the world is different, like you no. said, and um, I would suggest to go straight into using pastry margarine you know um so mm -hmm. that you could cater to a larger a uh, group of people including yes. vegans yeah and um the plasticity of the fat of the pastry margarine is superior over any other any other fat like palm or crisco and uh yeah and i don't think you're going to get any kind of crusting or breakable crust when you use uh when you use uh, a pastry margarine or the pr proper kind of uh yep. fat yep. And, and don't forget temperatures too when you process your dough you got to be at the right temperature you can't process it at a hot temperature mm -hmm. and you break down the uh fat crystals yep. right so some of this uh considerations are really uh quality of ingredient and um uh, process conditions. So take a look and, at those, and then the right flour too, because the the other. Oh yeah, I, I assume that, but yeah. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, she was using bread flour, so. Um, oh yeah, no, also don't encourage her to, <laughs> to use a little bit um, um softer flour, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, yeah. so let's go on to the next uh, um, topic of discussion. What is the it? Next one is we have. Um, we have someone looking for help with their wire cut cookies. Um, so they have wire cut cookies that they're producing and they're getting a lot of um, what I might call dimpling uh, on the bottom of the cookie and they want it to be more smooth, right? Um, they're, they're saying like the, the word they used is that it, it looks like a scrappy texture, right? Um, so it looks like it's scraped. Um, so the number, again, a number of different uh, comments, because uh, what helps us to help you is if you give us more information, like if you can tell us about the formula, if you, know, you can show us the picture, and the process, <laughs> they did show a picture. Oh, they um, did? They oh, did okay. show a picture. Yes, um, that does help. Um, but uh, and, and I can share that with you here if you want. Um, I can show you the picture here so you can see the, the bottom there's the there's the bottom of that cookie that has that rough texture that he uh, doesn't want to have on his cookie. Right? Oh, and I can so, solve that real fast. Yeah. So that is. Go ahead. <laughs> Just put in more water. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't water. guarantee you non-spread the cookie, but I can sm smoothen that. <laughs> or it could also be real too, too much chemical leavening um, that is he started to get gassing. Yeah. Um, or too much aeration of the of the uh, um, of the dough, which again speaks to not enough water, not enough hydration, right? Right, um, right. And, a lot uh, of that. Yeah, it's all related. Water. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What um, did the others say about that? Any any good observation from that? Um, uh, one of the interesting comments was is like, well, the uh, uh, a lot of them agree with me that it looks like a fluffy batter. Um, and but some also were saying um, wouldn't necessarily call it, call it an issue. It might even be desirable. Um, yeah, that's to, true. To yeah. look at so that it looks like it's crunchy and stuff like that. Um, it looks like a buttery sh uh, sugar shortbread, you know, like melt in your mouth kind of deliciousness. <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah, so a variety of different things, uh, depositing equipment, uh, uh, asking about uh, information there. Um, so, you know, again, some people saying use 50% soda, 50% baking powder. Um, so lots of there's there's about 19 comments on this one as well. Oh, so this awesome. is the great thing. We're getting lots of different ideas that they 
original poster can use to to try out and and see what is going to help them the best. I really love to see so many people helping out. That's yep. just so awesome. Yeah, that's really that's the fun part, right? And, yeah. Uh, um, and then while we're on cookies, um, there's another question on gluten free cookies, um, and these people make gluten free cookies for like ice cream sandwiches. Mm. And uh, so they they don't want them to be too crispy. They want them to stay a little bit soft. Um, and they're they're saying they're having challenges in baking them long enough to get a nice color, but mm -hmm. then they get too crispy, too too hard. Um, and if they bake them shorter, they stay soft enough, but then they look underbaked. They look they don't have enough color, right? Oh, okay. and so. Um, there, most of the suggestions have been uh, glucose, high fructose corn syrup, invert sugar, uh, dextrose, like powdered dextrose or things like that to promote browning. And uh, with you use powdered dextrose, they'll brown faster. So then hopefully you can achieve that. Or if you use things, humectants like glucose or high fructose corn syrup or other syrups or even honey, then those sugars won't recrystallize as readily after baking, and that keeps the cookie nice and soft. So it's the same principle with gluten-free cookies as it is with full gluten cookies on that. Um, and uh, the, But gluten-free cookies do generally crisp up even easier. Like they, they're um, a lot of the gluten-free cookies on the market, they they sort of push the 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 crispness envelope, right? Um, and, and some of them are like really thin and, and really thin and crisp, right? Um, and that's kind of like their hallmark in that sense, right? That's awesome. So um, it's 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 still so good to see gluten free bakers talk about their problems on this board. That we're yep. not just wheat based bakers. It's, no, it's we get lots of gluten free. Have, um, yeah, it's lovely to have that perspective always. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And here's a different one that is that is uh, about the fillings, about a pineapple filling or a pineapple jam. Um, Sounds delicious. Yeah, and um, and so um, they're using gelatin to set it. It's we're not mm. sure why. She hasn't really come back to uh, comment on that as to why she selected gelatin rather than pectin. Um, but the concern is that um, what you're seeing is senoresis. Um, senoresis is when water or liquid separates from the main mass. Um, so like if uh, if you had a buttercream and you have water weeping out of the buttercream, that is senoresis, right? So here she has water or liquid weeping out of the, the pineapple jelly. Yeah, um, you know why? Because she put it in there in the first place. Don't put it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and there's 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 other things is that um, if she's really high on sugar, that will uh, make it harder for any hydrocolloid to to bind, right? If the sugar is well, too high. Right? Well, the, th the first thing about pineapple jam is it's a jam. It doesn't need a hydrocolloid nor gelatin in there, right? So... For hydrocolloids or gelatin to work properly, functionally, you have to add water, mm -hmm. right? So you want to use this ingredient, so you put in more water, but then the water slips out later, you know? So you really don't need that ingredient in the first place because all the fiber in the pineapple jam is going to bind whatever water is left. And if you, if you ever cook pineapple jam before, um, I spent like probably like two, three hours over the stove just cooking pineapple jam. You know, there is literally no more water in there, mm -hmm. you know, and the water activity of that pineapple jam is going to be so low that no microorganisms going to grow in that. So there is Very really true. no need to put in any kind of hydrocolloid or gelatin. Very true. But we all know water is the baker's favorite ingredient. <laughs> um, yeah, it's but so it's cost not effective. a good idea in this instance, <laughs> right? Like if you're having synergesis issues, mm -hmm. it, you just have excess water that wants to break free 
after a certain amount of time or after a certain amount of uh, freestyle cycle. Well, yeah, and and if if you want to bind it, you you need to ensure that everything is in place that will help bind it because if the if you know to your point too, if the pineapple isn't cooked properly, pineapple has uh, certain enzymes in it that break gelatin and pectin down very readily um it and so it won't set up so you you either want to use a canned pineapple which has been retorted at very high temperatures or you just got to make sure you cook it really long to completely denature those enzymes right um and that's why making it in a jam like the way you described would be you know much better of course the more water you remove the more luxurious you're filling um and uh um Otherwise, you'd have to go to starches, like modified starches or something like that. And then it's just going to taste all pasty, right? Um, but yes, taking the yeah, water. Yeah, you know, sometimes we tend to forget that the simpler it is, the less problems we're going to have, <laughs> right? So simplify your ingredient label and maybe we will have less problems we have to face, you know, Absolutely. as bakers. So. Yeah. yeah, definitely try to take that out and and hopefully, you know, no senioresis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, well, that's all I, I selected for today. Yeah, that um, sounds that sounds really, really great that the community is helping these people. And um, if you need more information on these um, issues, please go ahead, join Mark um, on the Facebook baking industry professionals page mm -hmm. you can just search for us on facebook and you really need to be someone involved in the industry to really benefit from this particular group yep so thank you mark thanks so much for coming on this month and uh updating us on what's going on on the forums my pleasure look forward to seeing everybody next month again yeah see you next month bye-bye right, take care bye-bye